Hey guys, it's Ryan back here on a Monday morning. Uh, I wanted to make this video because I was just having an interesting exchange between someone in the uh, high level uh, open source group about the best way to approach, you know, a demo or a sales call. And I think that the both for GHL, um, you know, I think that most of the time this is going to be transactional, right? So when we think about the cost of acquisition, you don't want to have to run three, four, five, six sales calls with the same organization for something that is low ticket and transactional, right? If something's low ticket and transactional, the cost of acquisition needs to be very minimal and the amount of effort required that you put into that, the cost of acquiring that organization, that customer needs to be minimal as well. So you can do the sales call and the demo on the same call, keep it to 15 to 30 minutes max. That was my recommendation, particularly if you're only selling subscriptions for several hundred dollars um, you know, on a monthly basis. Now, you know, who am I to give you this advice, right? So um, I have worked in software my entire life, um, way before SaaS was even a thing. Um, but look, I used to work as a pre-sales consultant um, for big enterprise organizations. So my whole job was to go and do software demos, right? Um, and it was building uh, the commercial awareness um, around what, decision makers, constituents within those organizations wanted commercially and leading that into how you presented what the functions of any software platform were doing and connecting the dots those two ways to really drive a, a decent demo. So I put together a presentation. Um, I didn't brand it or anything like that because I don't care about that. I just want to give it away. Um, so please take this. Um, I'm going to make it available to anybody that wants it. Um, it is yours and then you can do whatever you want with it, right? So take the good bits, throw out the bad bits. If it's not helpful, well, just ignore what I'm saying. Seven slides to go through. So first thing is the ground rules, right? Let's use an example of demoing GHL to a realtor or a real estate agent, okay? So let's go with the ground rules and this would apply universally to any organization, right? So you want to sell the hole in the wall, not the drill, marketing 101. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with that phrase, because, you know, I was shocked that some people maybe weren't familiar with that phrase. Basically, what this is talking about is during a software demo, a lot of um, people get trapped in explaining exactly how something works. And that's not what customers care about at all, right? Um, so they're not going into a DIY store to buy a drill, essentially, and, you know, could almost think about this philosophically, um, what they're actually trying to achieve is a hole in the wall. So it's the outcome. And it's not about every single feature that's on that drill. Now, the features are important to some people. Um, and it's up to you to gauge what level of depth you want to go into. But essentially, you want to be talking about the outcome and the impact, which is the hole in the wall, never the drill, right? Point one. So that's a ground rule. Just set that mindset in your head before you enter into any sales conversation, when you're you know, sharing a screen or doing a demo, don't sit there and explain how it all works um, because one, it doesn't matter. What matters is what the outcome is, right? So that's number one. Number two, um, don't ever show a feature unless you can talk about the benefits of that feature um, and the benefits really need to matter, right? So there's no point saying, you know, we can do uh, social posting if they don't have a social presence, right? Um, there's no talking about talking about organizing social posting if um, uh, you don't know why that actually makes um, business sense, right? So, um, you know, don't be clicking around showing every little feature just for features sake, right? You need to be able to tie it back to a benefit, right? And if you can connect multiple features together, that creates a story of business benefit, which is essentially where you want to go with it, um, then that's what you want to be doing, right? And I like to think about if you can show one feature, you should be able to list three benefits. So a three to one benefit to feature ratio is a good rule of thumb. Um, third thing here I put in is that I never ask a customer what their pain points are. Never, right? And I've coached tons and tons of people in sales and when I used to take over sales organizations and have pre-sales guys doing demos and this, that, and the other, um, that was one of the biggest things that we changed, right? And so if you read literature like The Challenger Sale, right? If you haven't read that book, definitely suggest going and reading it. Um, 
customers have no idea what their pain point is, right? Because if they don't know what technology exists, how would they ever know what they're struggling with is actually a problem, right? Um, and I mentioned there that the best presents are the ones that you never asked for, right? So we can use uh, a ton of metaphors here, but you know, like if Henry Ford went and asked his customers what they wanted, they'd ask for a faster horse. If, you know, Steve Jobs and Apple listened to their customers, you know, they would have kept a physical keyboard like uh, like BlackBerry, right? So nobody was asking for the solutions. You need to create the solutions for them and present it in front of them and be like, you know, here is the promised land and tease the promised land and be like, you have never thought about doing it like this before. We have, here's how you could be doing it. And that's how you do it that way, right? So never ask them, just... We'll go into the line of questioning, but never ask what your pain points, right? Because they'll just go off of whatever they think, right? And then you're going to have to try and backtrack and solve for those things, which, you know, you never want to go into anyway. The other thing that is maybe a little bit controversial is that, you know, with GHL and SAS, you know, everybody's condensing their snapshots, you know, down into, you know, these three or four, you know, things because they want to like upsell, you know, additional features and things like that, right? My advice is have every single feature you can think of on the page visible to them. Because when you're talking, like I'm talking to you right now, their eyes are going through the page and they're going to see the menu and they're going to be like, what's social posting? You know, what is, what's, uh, what's workflows, right? And, you know, you want them to be intrigued with what else you can do. Um, because let's say you're demoing something where you've only got, um, conversation management, reputation management, and connecting, you know, inbound PPC ads, then they're asking about three or four different things. You can say, look, that's probably for another time. It is also on another plan. What I was going to show you today was this, right? Which, you know, is only this, but, you know, more than happy to dive into that with you at another time or at the end of this presentation. But just to let you know, you know, that stuff is on, a, on another plan, right? but leave it open for them to explore their curiosity with what's not being said, not just with what you're actually saying. Alrighty. So number one, um, active listening, right? Um, I used to run sales development teams, uh, which, you know, are essentially kind of like pre uh, sales appointment setters where their entire job is to just get people to agree to an appointment. The number one thing that you can do in this type of engagement is active listening. So the definition of that, of course, is that active listening requires you to listen attentively to a speaker and understand what they're saying. And then what you do is you respond and reflect on what's being said and retain the information later so you can use that information against them, right? And that's classic psychology therapist training as well. Um, they will ask you a set of questions five, six times and rephrase it five or six times and then they come back at you and they'll say something like this. What I'm hearing you say is that you would like this and this and that and the other and you always go, yes, that's exactly what I was trying to say. And so once you connect with them and show them that you've really heard what they're saying, but then you understand what they're saying on a deeper level because you're the expert and you've seen this before and you've solved for this problem before. And so that's really what you want to be doing. You want to be asking multiple questions. This, uh, and they could be exactly the same question, but rephrase in a different way and then come back at them with what I'm hearing you say. Active listening, number one. Number two, ask like five times if you have to the question, why? <clears throat> so when someone, let's use the real estate uh, example here. Someone says, you know, you say, um, all right, so tell me about your role in the organization. And they say, well, I'm a salesperson. I look after listings for sale. And you go, okay, cool. So, you know, how do you run your day? And they go, well, I get in the office at 9 a.m. and then blah, 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 blah. And you go, okay, well, why do you do this, right? And then they'll say something else. And then you go, well, why is that important to you, right? And then you go this, that, and the other. And why is that important to you, right? Um, if you just keep digging, right, as to why something's important to them, Oh, you know, I'm going to use my phone. This, thing. Why is that important that you do that, right? And just keep going until they've got nothing left to say, right? And all of this, all of these responses are absolute gold for one, you're going to use this against them later on in the conversation. And two, they're essentially digging themselves a huge hole 
telling you about how terrible and mismanaged and inefficient their day is. Um, and then what essentially is, is going to happen is that you're going to start to get them to dig themselves out of the hole, but it's going to be their idea to get themselves out of that hole. It was never you saying, use these features to get yourself out of this hole. It's they're listening to themselves, they're hearing the solution and they're like, yeah, I could use that. And then they dig themselves out of the hole. It's their idea, but it leads directly to your solution. So that's number two, ask, just keep going until there's a silence, right? And let uncomfortable silences happen, right? Challenger Sale talks about um, constructive tension in sales conversations. Use that, push them on ideas, challenge their status quo. Which leads to number three, which is an aha moment. So up until this point, you haven't shown anything. You're just sitting here like this. I haven't shown you software yet, but I've just been talking and asking questions and you're telling me all about your day and what you do and what's important to you. And now it's time for the aha moment. So an example of a conversation might go like this, you know, tell us about your day. What do you do? I'm a realtor, rah, rah. And you go, well, how do you manage all those conversations um, all those phone calls that happen on your mobile device, right? You're out on the road, you're in the car, you're wearing a suit, you're going to auctions. How do you manage all the phone calls? I've got a phone. Cool. What happens if you don't, you're not there to pick up the phone? Will they leave a voicemail? What if they don't leave a voicemail? Well, then I do this, you know, great. Well, what if, you know, what I'm hearing you say, is, what if we were able to send a message to everybody that you missed a call from and say, hey, it's Greg from XYZ Realty. What can I help you with? And so rather than just going through voicemails at the end of the day and making notes, you've got all the replies to those SMSs right there, right, for you to action. Would that be something you'd, you'd be looking at, in, in, be interested in? Absolutely, of course you would. And if they say, no, I wouldn't, you say, but you just told me how important it was that you respond to all your leads. You just told me how crap your day is because you miss your phone calls and that you have to go through all your voicemails in the back office. Wouldn't it be really cool to just have that automatically managed for you, optimize a universal conversation management system so that it was one interface, no matter where the conversations were coming from? Yes, it would. Cool. And then what you do is you say, great, well, it's not just SMS. It's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's other sources of information, and it's a universal inbox. So now SMS, email, Instagram, it's right there. Facebook, it's right there. Doesn't matter what it is, you can manage all of it. Spend three seconds on that. Cool tease the promised land with more than they can do. And then what you want to do is just pause and let them digest that in. And hopefully there's more than one stakeholder in the phone call and they'll look at each other and they'll go, oh Christ, we could do this, right? So that's number three, aha moments. Show them the aha moments so that you show them a feature, talk about the benefits, and then they're thinking about what they could do in their business with that feature, right? And that's going to be something that you never thought of, which brings me to this bit, right? Which is anecdotal evidence and storytelling, right? The best moments in a sales presentation or demonstration is when you have multiple stakeholders talking about how they could use something. And because you don't know their business, because you've only just met them five minutes ago, you get someone in the room saying, you know, we could do, we could use that for that. And they go, yeah, you know, like we could connect it over here and we could use this. And, you know, Greg over in property management could be using that for this. You know, Stacy in the front desk, she could be doing this and instead of spending all the time on this, right? And let them talk, right? Let them have those conversations where their creative juices are flowing about how could this, how this could help them, right? But you're not showing anything. You're not just sitting there featuring away. You're just sitting back after showing them 30 seconds of a feature talking about the benefit and the impact it makes and then let them come up with it, right? And then they'll come up with those ideas. And then, look, let's say that they don't, right? But the point here is that you want to have a bank of anecdotes to lean on to come in and talk about how this has been used before and made real impact before as well, right? So you talk about, you know, how terrible their day is managing their phone, phone numbers, you know, missed calls, etc. Great. Now you're going to be like, yeah, um, you know, this is no different from when I was talking to, you know, Thompson and Jones Realty down the road. Their problem was this, right? They were managing their socials, but they had socials on this platform. So they were paying a subscription over there. 
Then they had SMS on a phone number. They connected it to Twilio or whatever. Anyway, when they talked to us, they consolidated it and they started using it to automatically respond to property managers, right? Um, in the property management division. And so it went beyond just sales. Like they were using it for this, right? And so then again, that anecdotal story that you've got from someone else in their industry is again um, getting their creative juices flowing, thinking about, oh my God, well, if they're using it for that, why aren't we using it for that? And then it, that leads to FOMO, which is they don't want somebody else in their industry to have a competitive advantage over them. They want to be cutting edge. They want to be doing these things to give them competitive advantage, right? So the best case studies that are ever going to exist for you and your customers are the ones that you never thought about, but you want to know what they are because those case studies are absolutely gold, right? So you want to be able to drop in the conversation at any point. We've seen this before. A customer had this problem and they did this and it was like, wow, never even thought of using, you know, I'll call it GHL, but our software like that before. And they have taken it and run with it and they're doing amazing things. and It's fantastic. Okay, last thing here is objection handling made easy. So if you're employing point number one, which is active listening, you're asking them questions, all that information you need to retain in your head because you want to connect it back and think about this like a stand-up comic when they talk about and, they can, and they're always you know using little bits of stories and then when they get to the end, they throw in like the five or six different things that they said during their, their, um, their act and it's all connected together and it all makes sense, right? So think about piecing it all together throughout the conversation. You know, you show them this amazing feature, you know, and they're like, nah, we're not ready for it. And you're like, well, you just told me that it was really important for you that you get back to leads, you know, on time, right? We know that, you know, if you get back to leads within five minutes, you know, 85% chance that they'll go with you. Otherwise, they're already off calling a competitor. Um, I mean, you've already told me that, right? Is it not important to you? And basically, the, the idea here is not to be a dick, but using everything that they've just told you and they confirmed it was important to them right back at them if they start to have things like objections that it's not important to them because they've just told you for the last 20 minutes that it was important to you. Right, well, that's pretty much it. So I hope this was valuable for anybody out there who is trying to do SaaS or is doing SaaS and maybe this helps someone along the way. Uh, these, This presentation is going to be available to anybody that wants it. I am going to post it on the High Level Network open source group, of course. Um, hope everybody's crushing it out there. If you like my channel, please like and subscribe. It helps me get recommended. Um, this is not for sale. This is all available for you for free. Stay frosty. Cheers. Bye.